Hey guys, today I wanted to make a video and talk about a topic and it is how people get boxes early. This could be YouTubers, this could be people at your store, and this could be store owners, distributors, anyone involved in Magic the Gathering. There's a very simple way to get product early. Now before I begin, there's clear proof and the proof is the fact that I have videos of certain sets before the release date. Some YouTubers have videos of certain sets before the release date. So you can't go back in time and say, okay, no, no one gets boxes early, no one's opening boxes, no one's opening sets. The reason that it's so relevant for a YouTuber to get a box early, to get a pre-release kit early, or to get a fat pack early, is due to views. Views is equal to money, so if you can open it Wednesday or Thursday and pre-release is Friday, you're going to get a lot more views because you're the only video. This should be pretty obvious. So you might ask, why do I not do it anymore? I, I don't do it anymore because one, I feel like it will get these stores in trouble, although apparently no one cares. And two, I feel like it's a disadvantage to every other channel and a disadvantage to every other store. And as magic becomes more and more casual for me, I just felt not the need not to do it. It was as simple as I didn't want to do it. So I'm going to explain why this happened. So a store, let's say it gets 200 pre-release kits, it gets four boxes of Amon Cat prize boxes, and knows it's not going to be able to give those out. And kits will sell for $25 to $30 at pre-release. However, after pre-release event is over, those kits take a huge dip and you can buy them online for $15 to $20. If you are a store owner, it is logical for you to sell those kits, sell those boxes for $120 a box to someone who's going to buy it and that person's going to be at the pre-release or before the pre-release. The sooner you sell it, the more money you can make. And this also applies for singles. If instead of using the prize box for prizes, which happens very often, I can tell you, you open the prize boxes and then you put the singles on eBay and you're the only one with the foil Nissa or the foil Gideon, you're going to get top dollar for that foil Planeswalker that you wouldn't get if you had to wait a week later when everyone else is posting it online. The same can be said for trade value. So uh, essentially, those are the reasons people do it. The logistics is very simple. Distributors ship this product. Will either, you will either get it Wednesday or Thursday at the latest. Thursday, 1 p.m. at the latest. It's because you can't get it Friday. If, if they relied on you getting it Friday, then a lot of pre-releases wouldn't happen. So they ship out the boxes. The stores get it Wednesday. And they can open the boxes, they can put it on YouTube, they can sell the boxes to someone. And this is a very typical thing, because remember, the box, only, the pre-release kits, they lose all their, half their value once the pre-release is over. The store, my store, that I used to go to, has, still has pre-release kits from all the way from RTR that they cannot sell. And they have a ton of Dragon Maze, and they put it on heavy discount. And it's because there's no more excitement. We all know Dragon Maze is bad now. But back then, when the kits came out, we didn't know that. So if you can sell a kit for $25 to $30 when it comes out, then why wouldn't you do it? Then why wouldn't you do it? Because if you held on to it, guess what? That kit's value will deteriorate just that weekend. right? If you were to sell it the next Friday, you're looking at $15 to $20 a kit, when previously you could sell for $25 to $30, the same with a box. Boxes early sell for more money because the box has more expected value in it due to the hype of the cards. The cards in it are more the cards in that box are more valuable when no one has it. It's a simple supply and demand. The demand is at the highest point at pre-release, and the supply is at the lowest point. Therefore, you can make a killing if you just open your boxes, your prize boxes. And I've said this many times, prize boxes, in my opinion, are, a, they're just better. And 
I don't know why that is the case or how is it done, but I do know that from all the boxes I've opened, I've opened a lot of prize boxes in my day, they are better. There's more mythics, the mythics tend to be higher, uh, they tend to be planeswalkers, they tend to be more lands in the bo booster packs, and it makes a lot of sense because for pre-release, this is the one event that casual Magic players go to. They're not going to really go to FNM, they're not definitely not going to go to a GP, but here, they will go to pre-release, so they want to have a good experience of pulling that epic Planeswalker, so then they buy supplemental product from Walmart or Target. And let me tell you why stores do this. So from the YouTuber perspective or from the player perspective, of course you want early cards ahead of everyone else because you can trade into the hype. Or if you just like the card because you just like the card. Or if you wanted to draft that weekend, I've drafted sets that weekend because we have prize boxes. I mean, I'm not going to sugarcoat it, but you know, the reason stores are willing to do this and put their WPN at risk, most stores are break even or they are at slight loss. I've seen the financials of two different stores, one in Houston and one in Virginia. And I pretty much looked at the financials, saw that if it broke even, that's considered a very good month. So when they have a product that they can sell and they know because they've done pre-releases a lot of times that these kits will just diminish that uh, their largest pre-release will be 60 people, right? And their Saturday pre-release will be less. So maybe they sell 100 pre-release kits, they still have another 100. And if they hold on to them past Sunday, the price on those kits or absolutely annihilated, um, completely annihilated, because no one wants the kits anymore. They're all going to buy boxes, and then the box prices drop a ton because then online becomes you know competing online. That's why a store does it to survive. A lot of times when stores sell F and M promos or they sell you know the the good promos, right? Like let's say game day, game day or open house just happened. I guarantee you there there's not that many eBay sellers with that many collections. It's not like one dude went to like 20 different game days where he get get place at multiple play sets. No, that is a store selling those promos that should go to the players, but if there's not enough players, they just hold the promos and they make a lot of money, but when you sell the promo is very important. If you sell it before the open house, you're going to get a premium of the price. Supply and demand, very simple math. You are the only one selling. You are the only one who is going to do this. And you're going to get the highest price possible. The same with pre-release, pre-hyped cards. Who is not going to buy? If there is even a single person who wants a foil get in, that person wants to foil get in at his home two days later from pre-release. Right? Or ideally, even for pre-release. So here's a odd scenario where you know, stores are selling cards, uh, booster packs, and pre-release kits before the event, and then they, the people go to the event, and you know they put in these extra cards from that they got outside, and no one really thinks about it because they're like, oh, how, how would they get these cards early, right? But it's relatively easy to get pre-release kits early, due to the economics of what I just told you that the kit loses so much value after pre-release is over and has so much value before the event is over. So I just wanted to tell you, you know, the you know, the honest truth of how these, you know, how people, uh, YouTubers, stores, like why eBay, Craigslist even, how there's so much product before the actual event. And I'm not you know, a holier than thou, like when I was really into my YouTube channel, of course it made sense, right? Why not open product early? Because you're the only person, it's exactly the same principle, but instead of selling it for money, I'm the only person on YouTube with a video of blank Amarquette pre-release kits open Tuesday or Wednesday. That That's a huge, huge advantage. So imagine that advantage, not for a YouTuber, but for an actual store and how much extra money they could be making, especially every single time. Now, you might ask, won't the store get banned? Won't the YouTuber get banned? Won't something, something bad happen? And the answer is no. 
the answer is no, because I don't think Wizard of the Coast really cares. Um, they have some leak issues, which they have they have apparently fixed until the next leak. But when you see these openings and you see these things, it's not it's not like you have to be a YouTuber to get these early packs. I would I would say. 20 25 percent of store at least one store in your local area is going to understand the economics of this and say yes i am going to sell you this pre-release kit before pre-release i'm going to sell it for you maximum price i'm going to take your dci number i'm going to register you for me and don't come here just go to someone else and here's the kit or here's a box or here is you know a fat pack here's modern masters 2017 early it's just you know it's not difficult to get your hands on product early if you're willing to pay a good price for it. And the YouTubers currently, I mean, there's always this dichotomy, right? Of how do you get this product early? How do you get this product early? And the answer is from a store. I, I like when people say like, oh, someone anonymously sent me mail because that apparently is not right if the package does not have a return if you go to a post office and you try to send a package and it doesn't have a return address the post office won't not send you that package especially if it's a box right for a booster box try it i mean they just absolutely will not i think for legal reasons so the fact that people claim that they don't know where these boxes came from is so illogical because of course they have to have a return address and the return address is blank, blank, blank store. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty obvious, right? So anyway, that is my rant on early boxes. I did want to make this video because I felt like I could bring some light to the issue. And it is a question that I know whenever I posted early boxes, people would ask over and over and over again. And I never really explained it. I tried to explain it in some detail, but I felt like I could do a better job of just telling you why stores want to do it, why YouTubers want to do it, why non-YouTuber magic players want to do it. It all has to do with the fact that if you are the first to sell that foil Gideon, you will get the highest price. If you're the first to pull that foil Gideon on YouTube, you will get the most views, hence the most money. And it is a relationship between the stores and the person. Uh, should they be a YouTuber or should they not be a YouTuber? Uh, that is, that's the key. The key is anyone can get these boxes early. They just need to go to a store and the store has so many of these kits that they cannot get rid of. I'm sure that if you go to your store after pre-release is over, you will see lots of kits that no one wants to buy that have to go heavily discounted. Well, if the store has a guaranteed amount of money in their pocket, they would rather take the guaranteed money than risk the fact that the store will have so many people come to pre-release that it's insane and they ran out of product. Wizard of Coast gives a lot of product. Um, and they give product based on how many people turned out last time. And they always give a little extra on top of that. And I'm not sure if this is correct, but again, I've seen like Avison restored booster packs for prize bo or booster boxes for prize boxes. I've seen some weird stuff being sent to stores. And I'm not sure, like, are they like distribute? They don't. I, I mean, I would be shocked if they were sent from Wizard of Coast because they just seem kind of random. But there's other prize support being sent. I think at the distribution level, I'm not positive. But during the one of the recent sets, I think Shadows of Innistrad, the store was sent half a case of Avison Restored, and then half a case of uh, Dark Ascensions. Not a single box of uh, original Innistrad, which have been pretty cool, but they were supposed to be used as prize support. They were not used as prize support. They were immediately sold online because Avacyn Restored is a very pricey box. Dark Ascension was probably put aside. And that's how stores operate. They operate on a, if we don't sell this today, we're going to go bankrupt tomorrow scenario. And you, know, you don't open a card store because you want to get rich or it's a financially amazing move. You open a card store because you love it but what you love sometimes doesn't pay the bill. Anyway, leave me a comment below if you agree, you disagree. I just wanted to come kind of clean because I've always wanted to make this video 
and I wanted to make sure it's been a long time since I've op opened product early that you understand that I was over that bug and I am. So obviously in this channel, I have not opened product early in some time and I don't imagine I will in the future, but I did want to take some time to explain that question because that was the primary question a lot of people asked me uh, when, you know, when uh, I was opening product earlier than release date. Anyway, bye guys.